On Thursday, 17 cyclists left Southampton St Mary's Stadium for the Hawthorns. The aim was simple, to complete the 153 mile bike ride and help raise money for the Albion Foundation. Baggies legend Brendan Batson talks us through what for him was an emotional, inspiring and exhilarating experience. Well hi guys, um, it's Saturday night, just seeing the team win 1-0 against Southampton. But more than that, um, just completed the first part of the Tri Albion Challenge. Uh, 18, I've been part of 18 um, riders. I think what really set us in the mood, despite the weather, was to see the film from Josh Slaney remind us again what we, why we were doing this ride. And then we set off on Thursday morning. Sadly, the weather was atrocious, but that didn't dampen the enthusiasm for the cause. Um, we rode about 50, um, 62 miles, apart from the extra mileage where some of us got lost, but we won't mention that too much. And uh, we were making our way to Swindon. The, as I say, the weather was atrocious. Just wouldn't stop raining. We were drenched, cold. But to see, we had uh, three pairs of tandem riders. Uh, Dave, Blind Dave as he's affectionately known. Uh, Darren and Chris, along with their partners, who really are an inspiration. And also Paul Hunt, the handbike uh, rider. So we, kn we know if they can do it, we can also do it. I've, I've known Paul, I don't really know him, but I've seen him around. But over the three days to get to know him, Paul Hunt, he, he's a fantastic guy. I don't think you ever see him without a smile on his face. I, I've no experience, I wouldn't know what it's like to ride, ride a handbike, but he must be mentally strong in his upper body because he just seems to cruise along in that, um, in that bike of his. And as I say, he just keeps everybody laughing and smiling. He's one of those characters, when you see him from a distance, he puts a smile on your face. And I don't think there's anything that would get that lad down. A, a true inspiration in everything he does. Chris, who's um, partially sighted, had a good chat with him. Um, he only lost his sight about 18 months ago. He's, tw he's in his early 20s. Must have been devastating for him. But again, a terrific character. You know, always got a smile on his face. Terrific to engage with. And you get to know people in such a close proximity over a few days where you're all together. You know, you either get on um, or it ruins the atmosphere. And everybody did. And he was another one. You know, I don't think he's done much riding. Um, but him and his um, partner Adam, they were, f they were fantastic. And then of course we get to Blind Dave, um, who never stops, and uh, his partner Steve, fantastic job. I don't think I've been passed by a tandem before going at that sort of speed, and I couldn't keep up with them when they were going downhill. Uh, they do, as he says, when they go uphill, they're quite slow, but when they're going downhill, they'll get out of the way. So, um, but, but Dave, what a character, and um, I can see why the pair of them him and his partner Steve get on so well because they both got a great sense of humour. Of course, last but not least, um, is Darren Harris, who was uh, uh, always with his music, always smiling, always trying to do a little dance. Um, he likes his reggae and uh, all sorts of uh, hip hop, etc. But he, he was terrific as well. I mean, I had to laugh about him sometimes. His partner, Mark, I'd be pulling up alongside him and say, Mark, do you realise Darren's got his hands behind his head? He's not pedalling, he's just enjoying the flipping ride. Uh, but no, he played his part, very, very fit individual. It was a bit like being involved in the dress room again with the, the whole group of us and with all the support staff as well. Um, Rob Lake and his staff did a fantastic job and Gary, our outrider, to hopefully um, who made things safe for us on the roads. And then um, after a good night, early start again in the morning, things were slightly changed, so we split into two groups. Um, the organisation was a lot better because we learned from the first day and fair play to the, um, the Albion Foundation staff. Uh, totally different the second day, cold, very bright, sun was out, lovely, great day for riding. Um, everybody was complete, we, we rode to Evesham and everybody was in a hotel literally together and it was, it was terrific and we got in there you know, well ahead of schedule. That day being nice and bright, I was told several people had done it, I've never experienced Fish Hill. And for those of you who know what Fishhill is all about, you know it's a sweeping one and a half mile descent and it's literally straight down. And it was fantastic. It was probably one of the best moments of my life really. It was exhilarating. I've never been that fast on my bike. I got up to nearly 40 miles an hour, only to be bettered by Dave and Steve when they came down who had done just under 55 miles an hour. Bit scary, but totally thrilling. We set off on um, Saturday morning, obviously very excited about finishing off the ride coming into the stadium uh, to finish off the uh, first leg of the, um, the challenge and uh, looking forward to the game. Uh, sadly, the, the weather came to play again and we had a little bit of rain, you're wet, but you knew you were seeing the finishing line within 30 miles or so. Um, so it was really um, 
a terrific end to the, um, to the ride. We all met up at the Albion Foundation offices. And, um, you know, just handshakes all around, hugs. You know, it was really, you, know you, you almost felt as though you could do another couple of days together just to be together. And um, we know this is only the start of the, the three challenges. I know from uh, Monday, uh, there'll be a five days walk where the blind team are going to walk to every school in Sandwell. And then, of course, um, Blind Day, with the, probably the hardest part of the challenge, goes out to run in this 156-mile trek across the Sahara. So we wish him and his partner, Tony, well on that. It isn't something that I would even want to consider. Um, it just shows, you know, what a man he is, because he, is, he was fantastic over the days, as were all the uh, disabled um, riders and, it, and their partners were, you know, to be able to um, have a partner who's going to take you along and drag you through it is it, it, absolutely fantastic to see actually you know it's, it's inspiring um, it concentrates your mind and sometimes you know taking our good health for granted we know we're very fortunate and um, we're just making a contribution in our own little way to help the foundation who do outstanding work in the community so um, after a really cracking three days can call it four really because we met we went out of Southampton on Wednesday the culmination was all getting together riding into the stadium um, and seeing Josh uh, to meet us uh, by the Tony Brown uh, statue, along with his mum, obviously who plays a huge role in his life. And um, it was really, really good. We all realised why we were doing this, uh, this, or why we did this ride. And I must tell you, some of the older members, there was, I think a couple of them, if you'd have said anything too soft to them, they just burst into tears because they were really feeling it. And you see all these people and we know, you know, he's, a, he's got his disabilities, but what a character Josh is. And that's why we did, you know, and people like me, that we did a ride. It is about raising money and raising funds. People have been very, very generous. But if you are able to, please donate. You can go onto the Albion uh, website, the foundation website. They've got a Just Giving page. Every little bit helps. During the course of the ride, we're meeting people when we're having our stops in pubs, having lunch, who are donating money, giving us fiver, 15 quid, 20 pounds. You know, it's really great. So anything you can um, add to the total would be much appreciated.